Hey guys, welcome back to our channel Psychophilix. This is the first part of crash course on statistics for behavioral science. In this video, I will teach the basics of statistics used in psychology research. I will be covering the topics such as population, sample, variables, frequency distribution, graphical representation and many more. So what is statistics? These are group of numbers which represents info and these can be facts or figures and these are informative and time saving in nature. So using statistics we organize, analyze and interpret these numbers. So what, what is the use of statistics? Well, it can be used to understand fact, it can be used for comparing two groups, it can be to see if any relationship exists or to predict a relationship or any effect and in the policy making process. Using statistics, we organize, summarize, communicate results, determine conclusion and make sense of data collected. It is used in SPSS which is an I IBM software. So what are the different branches of statistics? Well there are two branches first is descriptive and second is inferential descriptive is used to describe summarize or overall summary of the data for example difference in average but we don't know if the significant if the result is significant for example average Whereas for inferential, we make inferences, draw conclusions. Example, difference between two groups. Uh, suppose there are two groups of one is of male gender and second is of female gender. Then later on, um, correlation or regression analysis can be done, which comes under inferential uh, branch of statistics. Now before we uh, continue, let us know what are the factors we should keep in mind for selecting a research topic. So the factors are cost involved, time we have, personal choice, sam and sample availability. So next, our next topic is population so what is population population is the entire set of individuals of interest whereas when we uh, say what sample is it is selected from population sample is representative of population in research one must note that population is large where a sample is small but both of them are specific to the research question we must note that for qualitative research we should not worry about generalization as less sample size is sufficient whereas for quantitative research moderate sample size should be taken because we need to generalize the results. Now we will talk about variables. 
so what are these variables these are any characteristics or conditions with changes these take different values for different individuals so what are the various types first is independent variable second dependent variable third discrete fourth continuous fifth moderating sixth mediating and seventh extraneous so what is an iv or independent variable these are manipulative these are antecedent or the ones these are the value which influence other variables dependent variable is observed these are consequent and these are the values influenced by other variables or values dv or dependent variable appear disappear and varies as per the iv now when we talk about discrete variable these are separate individual categorical these can be whole and countable so for example discrete can be number of students present in a class it can be either 50 or 30 or 20 it cannot be 20 and a half now fourth one that is continuous variables in this infinite numbers bit inf infinite numbers exist between two observed values so there is a uh, division into infinite numbers of fraction parts so for example it can be age height as we can divide these into infinite number of fractions for example a person can be of 11 years a person can be of 11 years and 5 days a person can be of 11 years 6 months 5 days 2 hours and 1 second so yeah we can divide it into i mean between two values there can be infinite number of fractions now moderating mediating and extraneous are the other kinds of variables now before we go ahead we should keep in mind a simple concept that is from population using sampling we get sample and from sampling so from sample using inferential statistics we can generalize the results to population where a sample can have descriptive statistics so from this rough diagram you must have got an idea that where these two different branches play a role first using sampling we derive the sample and then once we get the results of how the data is there we uh, you know we summarize or describe the data using the de uh, descriptive statistics then using inferential statistics we generalize the results to the whole population so we will now talk about data and graphical representation so before we uh, resume what is data so data is any observation measurement or collection of info it can be taken from two types of data collection that is 
qualitative and quantitative so what is uh, the data taken from qualitative is descriptive and uh, it is descriptive in nature that is behavior thoughts attitude expressions experiences are recorded and it is uh, taken through coding whereas quantitative it is numerical data now when we talk about frequency distribution what is frequency distribution frequency distribution is organized tabulation of that is a uh, number of individuals each category whereas frequency and the frequency distribution refers to number of times a value has appeared it is uh, a frequency distribution scores with frequencies taken then it is arranged to high to low it shows concentration in one area or if the data is spread out it can be in table or graphical uh, tabular or graphical form uh, it has two components first is categories second is frequency or the number of ta- indi- uh, individuals in each category now let's talk about uh, class interval frequency distribution now in class interval scores are grouped into intervals scores are grouped into intervals and frequency is taken now for cumulative frequency distribution frequency cumuli- uh, frequency is taken in cumulative manner that is sum of all previous frequency now let's talk about graphical representation so what is graphical representation it is geometrical image or mathematical pic or stats in visual terms so what are the advantages of graphical representation first it is more attractive second it has a more lasting effect then we it is easy to interpret fourth proper estimation and evaluation fifth it can be used as for forecasting now there are uh, basically three main types that is bar graph histogram and pie chart now for bar graph the data should be nominal the it should uh, the category should be distinct and unrelated and it should be discrete in nature for histogram it is bar like but without space it has a single continuous variable now for pie chart when they when less categories are present 
and for the steps for making a pie chart are for percentage we can calculate by e into 100 and for angle it is value of each component upon sum into 360 degree now let's talk about frequency polygon what is frequency polygon it is identical to histogram it is to compare data sets it is a line uh, it, it is a line graph actually in which quantitative data is used and a continuous line is drawn from dot to dot down to x axis at end now you must have also heard about frequency curve so what is the um, i mean the difference between these two well frequency curve is drawn freehand it is more smooth and frequency polygon when smoothed out leads to a frequency curve so now let's deal with the last topic of this first part that is cumulative frequency curve or ogive so it is estimation of how many numbers lie below or above that is uh, so if a va it is to find out if how many people have scored more than 50 marks in an exam and etc so this can be done using ogive so what are the various steps first is cumulative frequency second cumulative frequency plot upwards of at the upper or lower limit third joining the points which leads to cumulative frequency curve or ogive we must remember that when the uh, when the question asks for more then then we choose the lower limit whereas if it is less than we choose the upper limit for example for lower limit it is uh, if suppose the interval is 5 to 10 then we choose 5 for upper limit if the interval is 20 to 25 we choose 25 so we come towards the end of this first part of our crash course video on basics of statistics hope you have uh, learned something out of it and so let's see you in, our, in the next video thank you